Hey there, YouTubers. The Mind and Body Doc here from Smarty Pants Analytics. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey everyone, it's the Mind and Body Doc. So, how many times have you asked a buddy or someone you think should be knowledgeable and should know what they're saying, how much water you should actually drink? Or even gotten unsolicited but helpful advice from your trainer, or even been told by your doctor on a visit, or a parent who's wanting you to be healthier to drink X or Y amount of water. How much water should you drink to perform at your best and be as healthy in mind and body as you can be? The answer, coming right up. If you stick around through the full video, I'll go into what the scientific literature currently says about why water is so important and comments on how much water you should really drink throughout the day. But here is the answer right up front. As long as you don't have any medical problems or other conditions where you need to be careful about how much water you take in during the course of a day or if you're not taking any medications or other supplements where you need to be careful how much or how little water you drink during the course of a day. If you're a male, you should be maximizing your hydration with about four liters of total water intake throughout the course of a day with a liter of that coming from your food. If you're a female, your total water intake should be about 3.5 liters of water throughout the course of a day with a liter of that coming from your food. That's it, that's your small answer. If you wanna learn more and get a few more of the quick details on what studies really show are just some of the major benefits of maximizing your hydration, keep watching. So, here goes. Hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click on that bell for notifications of when I have a new video up. New videos answering your questions about lifestyle topics and medical or general science questions, general health or mental health questions, or diet products and fitness devices, much, much more. All posted weekly to help you achieve your best in body and mind. So this is a question that drives physicians crazy. because it's really important, but the data, even for doctors, can be confusing at times. And even if it seems simple, some people find it hard to get it right on a consistent basis sometimes. I'm gonna go over the data on what studies show are just some of the major benefits of hydration. And as we discuss the many benefits to your overall daily performance for your body and mind. I mean, what's so hard, right? Step one open mouth. Step two, pour water in mouth. Step three, swallow, then repeat. But so which one of these is the correct amount for your total daily ingestion of water in order to maximize your body's hydration? I was searching the interwebs for some good sources to refer my patients to and a lot of what I saw and heard had me like, but thank goodness I did find a handful of good sources. I have subscribed to some of the best one of those. See them here on my page here on YouTube. But there was so much silly stuff that I just felt the need. No, the need to provide a small answer to this big question. Before we get into the specifics of how much water we need to consume each day, it's important to review why. For those of you who want to dive deeper, many of the articles I cite will give you more specifics and talk about the difference between drinking water and the water we get from food. Things like watermelon or celery are easy to pick on, but remember, some of this stuff is mostly water, like us. So let's review how important water really is for us from a couple of different perspectives. What water does for us and relatively new findings related to the positive effects of hydration and the negative effects of dehydration. 
we'll also review how we're mostly made of water. As a medical specialist in the brain and behavior, I focus on my area of expertise, which is the brain, especially because it's one of the areas of the body with the highest concentrations of water. And studies continue to show that the brain is very sensitive to dehydration, causing negative effects, and it responds strongly in a positive way when you hydrate well. So let's get to it. We are mostly walking, talking bags of fat and muscle that contain water. Many of my patients hate when I say that because it sounds so vulgar, but in a lot of the kids, when I say that in my practice, will just kind of roll their eyes at me, but it's true. Biological bags full of water with minerals, saturated with gases like oxygen and nitrogen and carbon dioxide, with floating little pieces of proteins and enzymes and sugar and a bunch of other fun stuff. Technically, we are really made up of a bunch of smaller components like cells. We're made up of billions of these cells, each a little tiny fat bag of water with stuff inside it. And all these cells make us, us and it's mostly water. Water makes up more than 60% of our body weight at any given time, whether we're male or female. There are some slight differences and with some situations where we are retaining water faster than we can lose it, raising that number, and some situations where we're losing water faster than we can replace it, lowering that number. But there are parts of us that are more water than others, like the brain and the heart, which are about 80% water, or the lungs, which are almost 85% water. How about when people get an allergic reaction and have swelling? That's water being leaked out into the tissues. Also, both men and women retain water at different times of the month due to a natural cycle, which is actually based on the moon, on the lunar cycle. Women will have a wider range of variation of their total water weight and water retention related to hormonal cycles and changes throughout the month. Basically, we need water to live and function biologically. Even small amounts of dehydration have been linked with kidney, gastrointestinal, circulatory, lung disorders, post-operative complications, and neuropsychiatric disorders. Studies show benefits to the skin, eyes, digestion, and overall well-being. Optimal hydration has been shown in studies and trials to make you heal correctly, and we need water in order to regulate our blood pressure correctly, all on a daily basis. We need water in order to think correctly, and in order for our memory to work right. Beginning as children, definitely extending throughout our lives, everyone needs good focus and concentration but what if your job absolutely positively depends on it, like pilots and doctors? Fluid overload, the other way, has been linked with neurological and psychiatric problems, heart and lung disorders, diluted or low electrolytes in your blood, particularly low salt, called hyponatremia, edema, gastrointestinal dysfunction, and postoperative complications. So you don't want to drink too much, but you always want to optimize and get that very tippy top. So given that we are made of water, the demonstrated importance of water, how we use it to function on a daily basis, how we use it to carry our nutrients within our bodies, how we use it to absorb the shock of running or to float in our mother's womb, or how we use it to carry away our waste, how we ingest it in liquid form and also as part of food, how we get rid of it as urine and sweat throughout our pores, how we expel it in our breath. That's why we can fog up a mirror with our breath. It's in our saliva helping us digest from the moment food touches our tongue. You secrete it in your tears. It comes out of your nose. It fills blisters and it's even in your normally squishy poop, let alone if you have diarrhea. So how much water do you really need? Turns out that old adage of eight, eight ounce glasses of water, eight by eight, is a good starting point. But how much of that is true? Is that statement eight by eight based on some kind of science? It turns out 
the 8x8 statement comes from a very, very deep cut in the nutritional literature. It's a very rough estimate given as an offhand remark at the end of a sentence from a really smart nutritionist as an answer to a question at the end of a chapter in a book they wrote from early in the 20th century. It was cited so many times that it became the rule and it turned out to be a pretty decent little rule of thumb because again, as it turned out, the person that said it was knowledgeable enough that when they gave that rough estimate, it was based on their knowledge, the research at the time, their understanding of the science of the time. But you can hurt yourself with too much water if you have certain medical conditions or if you're not eating correctly, or if you're taking certain medications. The opposite is also true, meaning that if you don't drink enough water when you have certain medical conditions, or when you're prone to certain problems, or when you're taking certain medications, you can hurt yourself by not drinking enough water. So we're back to the original question, aren't we? How, how much water should I drink in a day? Well, the answer kind of sucks. At least that's what I get from my patients when I tell them because it really just sort of depends. It depends on all of these things I just talked about. Item number one, are you male or female? Item number two, do you have a medical condition that you have to be careful about? Item number three, are you on certain medications that you've been told you have to be careful with how much water you drink? Item number four, are you losing a lot of water because of exercise or because you live in a hot climate where you lose a lot of moisture? Item number five, are you exercising or are you sitting on a couch watching TV most of the day? Are you doing regular yoga? Are you doing hot yoga? The rough estimate, which does seem to be correct based on previous measurements of body mass and percentage of water, the understanding that we want to keep it at least at those quote unquote normal levels of saturation for a human body, considering how much water people drink and when they've done these studies and they've looked at, okay, these people who are quote unquote normal, who have no other medical problems, who seem to be healthy, seem to be fit. After looking at all of those assessments also, it turns out that about three liters of water ingested as liquid per day for a male and two and a half liters for a woman ingested liquid water a day for both that's plus about one liter of water that we get from our food. So it turns out that about eight by eight is kind of a rough starting point and a bare, bare, bare minimum that is relatively safe as a guideline, but usually not enough even for those people who aren't really losing a lot of water. As a general rule for most people on any given day, eight by eight is a good rule of thumb. But again, that's the basic starting point. People who aren't necessarily gaining or losing too much water and who aren't necessarily in a really hot or really cold environment or in a really humid or really dry place. Or if you're taking medications that are going to dry you out, then you need more water, not less. As the studies that I cited have demonstrated, even if you're slightly dehydrated, that's going to impact your whole body, but especially the most sensitive instrument known to humanity the human brain. It's going to affect negatively your ability to think, to focus, to concentrate, to use your memory both long-term and short-term. So when in doubt, hydrate. As long as you're eating okay, as long as you don't have any of those medical conditions we talked about, where you have to be very careful with how much water you're drinking, you should hydrate. Use quality water, see in one of my other videos for that, and shoot for your maximum and hydrate well every day. Tell me in the comments below, how much water do you usually drink? Also, what tips and tricks do you use in order to get in all the water you should be drinking during the day? Also, don't forget to ask any questions that I might be able to answer for you in the future. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. By the way, Related videos will be coming up that answer the questions, drinking alkaline high pH water, is that really a thing? And what true scientific proven benefits does it have, if any? Other upcoming videos will be, how long can a person live without drinking water? And ADD, ADHD medicines, stimulants. Can they be setting you up for serious problems? 